talk. Uh, today, I'm going to report on, with, uh, on our experience uh, with running QGIS server in production. So I will go through a number of techniques uh, that you have to running QGIS server uh, in production. And I will talk about the drawbacks and the advantages of each option you have uh, based on my experience. So my name is Eric. Uh, I work at Oslandia, uh, which is an open source company located in France. Uh, so we provide service on QGIS, uh, PostGIS. We also do development on 3D web, 3D stuff, and we also do data science activities. So I'm not a core uh, QGIS developer, but I've been setting up a QGIS server for a number of customers that we have. So I have some experience with uh, setting it up, and this is really a report about, about this. So this is the agenda for the talk. Uh, first of all, I will introduce QGIS Server, for those of you who don't know QGIS Server. And then I will get into more technical details, uh, talking about CGI and fast CGI, uh, which are standards for the web. Uh, and then I will explain the options you have to running QGIS Server uh, using those standards. And before concluding, I will say a word about, uh, about Docker and how to use Docker for QGIS server execution. So a quick introduction to QGIS server. And by the way, this is a logo that uh, colleagues of mine created. It's not official uh, logo at this moment, but it may become official in the future. But I just wanted you to, to see it because I think it's quite nice. So yeah, QGIS server. QGIS server is a map engine. Uh, it's, a, it's an OGC server. So it kind of competes with a map server and geo server. Uh, and it supports a number of OGC protocols, including WMS, WFS, WFST as well is supported, and also WMTS for, for tiles. Uh, one of the particularities of QGIS server is that it includes lots of vendor-specific parameters and, and requests, which makes it very flexible for developing applications. So for example, there's, there is this get print uh, request that you can use for printing maps to PDFs. So very convenient for, for your applications. Uh, so th what QGIS server really is, it's about publishing your QGIS projects to the web. So what you do is you design and create, create your maps uh, using QGIS desktop, and then you save your map as a QGIS project, and then you can reuse this QGIS project with QGIS server. So you can publish your QGIS uh, projects uh, using QGIS server to the web. So actually, QGIS Server changed uh, a lot. Between version 2 and version 3 of QGIS, there have been many, many improvements between those two versions. Uh, some of the highlights include um, multi-thread rendering, as done in QGIS Desktop, WFS 1.1 support, and now there is WS, WFS 3 that have been merged uh, very very recently, uh, you can do, you can implement your own services using the Python bindings uh, support. Uh, there is many things and and tons of bug fixes as well that were that were made in this in this release. And uh, at Oslandia, we've, we've also worked on the OGC compliance platform, uh, which is a platform uh, that we use. It's a server. Uh, that we use to assess that um, QGIS server remains uh, compliant, OGC compliant. So for example, this is a report page for the WMS 1.3.0 compliancy. So each night, there is, um, we have processes running to, to assess the, the compliancy. So that was the introduction to QGIS server. Now I'm going to get into more technical details um, because to know how to run, to understand, to, to, yeah, to know how to run QGIS server, you have to understand a bit of those two standards. Um, so CGI and fast CGI standards. 
Um, because, yeah, QG server is actually a CGI, fast CGI program. So let's start with uh, CGI. Um, I'm sure many of you know uh, this standard. It's a very, very old uh, standard. It stands for Common Gateway Interface. So it was uh, invented a long time ago where the web was essentially uh, HTML stat static pages. So it was invented for web servers to execute programs that generate web pages dynamically. So basically, you have an HTTP request uh, that comes in. It's handled by the web server. The web server figures that this request is for needs to be handled by a program. So it will pass the request to the program. Actually, it's going to start a process for that program. Then it will pass the request to the program. The program is going to handle the request, create some content, a response, passes it back to the web server, and then the web server will finish the process, and then it will wrap the, the response into an HTTP response and sends it back to the, to the re requesting client. So that's the way it works. And the, the paradigm of this standard is that you have one process per request. Um, so the, C, the CGI uh, process is created at the start of the request and torn down at the end of the request. And this may incur a very high overhead based on your application workload. So CGI, again, was invented a long time ago uh, for dynamic content. It's very, very, very simple, very simple to implement, uh, very simple to understand, but it's definitely not appropriate for high-end applications. And it's not appropriate for QG server type of workloads. Uh, this is why fast CGI was invented. C fast CGI obviously is more recent than CGI, but it's still a very, very old uh, protocol. So in this case, with fast CGI, instead of creating a new process each time for each request, uh, you have your processes. Your processes are persistent, uh, and they can handle a, seri a series of requests as opposed to handling only one request. So for that reason, fast CGI is much much more efficient than than CGI, and you want to make sure uh, you use fast CGI for QG server. This is very critical to get uh, good performance out of QG server. And it, it might seem obvious, but um, there is some, compatibi some compatibility between CGI or, and fast CGI. So maybe you think that QG server runs using fast CGI, but actually it's not, because you didn't configure, let's say, Apache the proper way, and you think you use the correct interface, but you actually don't. So now let's look at uh, how you, we can execute QG Server as a fast CGI program into more detail. Um, so you have to have a web, servers, a web server first, because as a fast CGI program, um, QG Server does not know anything about HTTP. It's unknown to him, to it. No HTTP support. It's just a, web, it's just a fast CGI application. So you have to have a web server, and a web server that supports uh, fast CGI. And Apache and Nginx are very popular web servers, uh, very flexible. You can do many, many things with them, including fast CGI, but also other stuff. Uh, so they, we are going to focus on those in the rest of the, of the talk. And there is actually a big difference uh, between the two servers uh, for as far as fast CGI is concerned, is that with Apache and with the FCGID module, uh, Apache will manage the, app the application processes for you, meaning that it will take care of creating the process, tiering, stopping the process, et cetera. All the life cycle of your application will be, will be handled by Apache and this, and this module. While if you use Nginx, this is not the case. So you will have to have some mechanism for, for spawning the application processes. And I will go back to this in a, in a minute. So let's look 
into more detail at Apache with this uh, FCGID module. It's a technique that people have been using for a long, long time. Um, yeah, I think people running map server, for example, they, they use this technique a lot, um, this mechanism. And based on my experience, uh, it's still a very, very good choice. It has many advantages. It's very easy to set up. Uh, you can find many good examples on the internet. Uh, as I said already, the, the fast the FCGID module will manage the, the fast CGI processes for you. So very, very easy also for that reason. Uh, and you can have also multiple application processes uh, for concurrent requests. Uh, so it handles uh, parallelism for you, which is quite good. And it's also a very robust uh, solution because you have parameters like this one, max request per process. Uh, so you can configure it to say, um, after a certain number of requests, I, I want you to stop the process and recreate it the, the next time. And this is very, very good for uh, buggy applications where you have memory leaks, for example, and in that case, you want to restart the process from, from, from time to time. And this can do it. So I'm, I, I don't want to describe this into detail, but this is the, what the configuration look like uh, using this module, Apache module. Um, and there is another module that you can use, um, Apache, again. It's the proxy FCGI module. Uh, but this one is very different because this one will not manage the, the fast CGI processes for you. So you have to do it by yourself. And this is exactly the, the same case, case uh, as with uh, Nginx. With Nginx, there is only one module that you can use um, and it doesn't manage the fast CGI processes for you. This is the configuration using Nginx. I want to go fast and, and talk about, so we said uh, with Nginx, you have to manage the fast CGI processes. Uh, so how do you do that? How do you start the processes? How do you handle all the life cycle of your uh, fast CGI application? So there is very easy solution. Um, that's a solution you find um, when you read documentation, when you Google uh, fast CGI plus NG Nginx, for example, uh, you, will, you will see this solution. It's very easy because it's packaged uh, for a lot of Linux distros. Um, there is a systemd service uh, within the package, so very easy to set up, but don't use it because it's very, very slow. Actually, it's fast CGI, but it will run your applica applications as a CGI program. So one process per request, very slow. Don't use it. Uh, there is a better choice, um, which is the Spawn FCGI um, package application that you can use. It's a, actually a thin wrapper uh, around your fast CGI program, and it will take care of creating the socket, the communication socket between your, your web server and your fast CGI program. But it's also more, more work on your side. It's also packaged uh, with, uh, in your distribution, but you will have to write uh, some service for it to be able to start it. Um, to, for it to be started at each reboot, et cetera. So you will need to write a systemd service for, for it. So a bit more work on your side. It's also a very good tool for if you want to run QG server in Docker, and I will go back to this at the end of the talk. Another good choice, um, which, we, which we found, uh, is to rely on systemd directly. Uh, systemd uh, has all the mechanisms uh, needed uh, for this. So there is the socket uh, uh, kind of service that you can use uh, to create a socket and it can wake up your process. So there is some very good mechanism that, that you can leverage here. Uh, so, so in this case, you don't use Spawn FCGI as a, as a wrapper to your process, but the wrapper is systemd itself. So it's one component less because in this, in this case you also need to write a systemd service, so one component less. So it's 
quite a good solution and we've had um we are, yeah we have good uh, exper experience with it and we think it's a good option uh we actually have a full blog post explaining how to to set this up uh if you want to to check if you're interested you can check it out uh, so to sum it up on, on the options you have, um, so Apache and Nginx are actually a very, very good solution. They work, they both work very well, so it's, it's no surprise here. Um, Apache FCGID is very easy, flexible, and robust solution. So if you are, if you are an Apache user and you already use Apache for other stuff, uh, this is definitely a good, good option. Uh, if you use Nginx, don't use FCGI wrap for managing your processes. Uh, use Spawn FCGI or Systemd directly. Uh, a word about Docker. Um, so there are actually many Docker images for QGIS server on the, on the internet. Uh, some are good, some are not as good. Uh, they're often based on Debian uh, because it's very easy to install QGIS server on, on Debian-based systems. Uh, so Docker is very useful, I think, for QGIS server uh, because, uh, as I said, it's very easy to install it on Debian. It's not, it's not as easy to install it on other Linux distros, like, for example, CentOS. Uh, so if you use Docker, then you can use Docker on your CentOS machine, and, and this makes it easy to, to install and, and deploy QGIS server. Um, so at Oslandia, we have a Docker uh, QGIS image. Uh, yes, it's based on Debian. It uses the Spawn FCGI wrapper that I talked about, and it exposes a fast CGI TCP socket. So there is a big difference between other images that, we, that you can find on the internet is that in, it doesn't include any web server. It's just fast CGI exposed uh, socket, uh, fast CGI process running into this container. And uh, so yeah, no web server. This, so this is quite uh, flexible for you because if you already have a web server running for other workloads, you can reuse it. So it's not, it's, it's an Oslandia image at this time, and, but, and there is this uh, QGIS announcement proposal uh, discussing having official uh, Docker images for QGIS, and we'd like to push our image. Uh, we'd like uh, to, uh, yeah, we are talking about using this image as part of this QEP, uh, so we'd like, we'd really much like to make it official. I don't know how I'm, I'm running, but yeah, this is the end of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. There, is there any questions for him? No? No question? No? Yeah, there is one over okay. there. It's actually not a question, but a comment. Uh, we discussed it at the contributor meeting to have an official uh, Docker image for QGIS server, so your Q QEP would be most welcome. And uh, there is other implementation we want to try to get the, like the best of all the <laughs> uh, approaches out there. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, thank you. Thank you.